I, I, I still never cease to be touched when I hear this and see what we just saw. But I just want to tell you today that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What? I want to preach. What is Jesus' mission? What is his mission? If you care to turn with me just for a very few minutes in Luke, the fourth chapter, This is powerful. Luke 4, giving you time to find the book, then we'll look at the scripture. Praise God. My, it's been a great service this morning thus far while you're finding Luke, the fourth chapter, and le looking at verse number 16, and it's speaking of Jesus. And he came to Nazareth, and uh, Brother Forey and I had just recently talked about the question was in the Word of God, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? How many of you know that's in the book? But let's read this. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, and that's what ours is. What is our custom? He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Our custom is to go to the house of God and worshiping him, and that's why we're here today. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah as we know it. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit, notice that's capitalized with the S, Spirit, denoting the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him and he began to say to them after he's sitting down, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Everything that you have heard me say, what he was saying is fulfilled in your ears. And it still will be fulfilled in ears of the hearers today if any man will hear. If any man will hear, if any man will open unto me, he said, I will come in and I will eat with him. Let us pray this morning. Brother Jess, would you take us to the Lord in prayer with me? Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. I get excited about knowing the ministry of Jesus. It's not a fable. It's not something that's pretended. It's not something that's just a false sense of hope and security. It's not a false promise, but it's a reality today to those that would dare to take the Word of God at faith value face value and faith value but without faith it is impossible to please god and and to come to him we have to come by faith and the bible said he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him 
Is anybody seeking the Lord today? Is anybody today ready for Jesus to do something more for you than you could ever do in your life? Many people, if you look at their life without the Lord, we make a bigger mess out of our life than we make good. But Jesus has changed the lives of us that have come to him. And I am excited to know that the promises of God are yea and amen. And Jesus Christ, the Bible says, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what he was in yesteryear and yester century and all, oh, he is still the same today. And I am excited to, pre pre to present to you today that Jesus is the answer to what we have need of. And we consider that many people do not seem always to look to him. They look to him as a last resort instead of a first resolution. And I'm glad that it was through a Gideon's Bible myself that I first really read the Word of God from a New Testament that was given to me in the seventh grade. And I read it through, I read the Word of God through, and I looked at things, and I still didn't live for God. My life got in a mess, and as a teenager, I was in a mess, and my parents didn't really know what to do with me. I was mean, I was full of devils, I was devious, I was into everything but something good. But God delivered me. God delivered me, filled me with His Spirit, and I've been living for Him ever since, and I still have the want to today to live for Him. Because I want to tell you, when you realize your life is in a mess and you don't care about living, I become suicidal myself and I needed deliverance. God filled me. Devils came out of me, were cast out of me. I was filled with the Holy Ghost and I have been living for God ever since. I had something that was in my mind. It's a scripture to know that what God would do. We wonder what will Jesus do do for me. First of all, we've got to realize we've got problems. And so I've got, uh, got something here, and how can you know what God will do for us? We look at a world that has been made so beautiful. We look at a world that has been made by God, and man has never been able to duplicate what God has done. God made every plant, he made every plant, and give every plant distinction. Every tree, every vine, every flower, everything he made, and it reproduces continuously without ever changing. Man wants to say people have evolved in all of this, animals have evolved, but where is the proof of that? Everything remains constant and consistent that God has made except humanity. Humanity has deviated, but God is the same as I've already said yesterday, today, and forever. And what will keep anybody consistent and persistent and constant is whenever we have God in control of our life. And so if we never had a problem, man without God is destined to problems due to Adam and Eve and their sin in the garden. It changed them from the course of being what God wanted them to be. But there is restitution. There is hope. There is that restoration that people can have. Now, I want you to consider some things that I have written down. Most times, 
I don't write things down, but I want to cover some things and not leave anything out for just a little bit. Most times I don't preach with notes, but let's begin with this. If you never felt pain, then how would you know that I'm a healer? This is the Lord that he would tell us today that he is a healer. If you never had any sickness, how could you know that he could heal? If we see everything that is made in this world in creation, and we do, and we look at all that, and we wonder, but we today know that God is responsible, that there had to be a higher authority and order of life than man because man cannot do these things and God keeps everything in order and we look at all the things that God has made and we are and wonder about it all and we know it's all by God's intelligent design and so as we look at all these things we're fascinated and if God can do all this and keep it all in order why shouldn't I be willing to subject my life that has been chaotic and put it at a place at an altar and say, God, I've made a mess out of my life. I need you. I need your help, your hope, and your Holy Spirit to change me, to transform me, to mold me, to make me into the vessel of honor that you want me to be when I have become so dishonorable to you, to others, as well as myself. And so I begin to look at it, and I begin to realize, God, I need a healing spiritually. I need a healing mentally. I need you and he's the answer. But how could I know that he could do these things except that I become a recipient of his mercy, of his grace, of his mighty power to do all that he has done? And if you never went through difficulty, how would you know that God could be a deliverer to set you free? Some questions and answers we today that sit here today in heavenly places that have experienced God's power we know that God is able to do these things if you never had a trial how do you know that God could make you an overcomer there's some things that we are subjected to and the reason that we're subjected to some things and the reason that we're allowed somewhat to have some free reign in our life and that is to make choices in our life so that even if we have that right to choose between good and evil even in choosing evil that we would learn to choose that which is good and so I'm telling a church this morning that God lets us have choices and when we have questions when we have difficulties when we have problematic issues we need to understand there is one that has wisdom knowledge power and understanding that supersedes us and even when we have a desire to do that which is right it is no longer in us really because of our fallen nature of the Adamic nature that came from Adam when he fell with the first sin and sought to cover himself. But before he was the first one, Adam was the first one to use camouflage. He and Eve sewed fig leaves together to cover their nakedness. They were ashamed at their appearance, and yet today it's hard to find many people that are ashamed that they are naked or nearly naked in the public. And if it wasn't for the law, they, um, there would be more people, there would be more streakers than you ever dreamed. I don't know if they would streak. They probably wouldn't run nowhere. They'd just stand there. Exposed. But I'm just telling the church 
Adam and Eve, freshly having sinned, still felt close enough to God at that point to feel conviction about their error, their sin. Adam, where art thou? We're over here. We're here. Why are you here? Because we're naked. Who told you you were naked? The Spirit of God calls them to see the error of their way. Calls them to see everything that they did and even feel conviction even though there was within them whenever God inquired. When God inquired of Adam and Eve, he began to ask Adam, and Adam said, the woman you gave me, she did give to me, and I did eat. So there was a sinful nature, though they felt a conviction. There was a problem by their making a choice contrary to what God wanted them to do when they had that choice. They chose wrongly and suffered immensely. And so God asked Eve, what have you done? Well, the serpent, he beguiled me, and I did eat. But each one of them was cursed, and they were cursed with death. And then the Lord, you read this in Genesis, he inquired of Satan, who was in a snake, in a serpent, the Bible lets us know. And the devil didn't have anything to say at all. He, what could he say? He just deceived God's creation and caused them to fall from the place of of position and condition that they had with God. And so God cursed each one of them. And that's why we find that the devil has no leg to stand on today. The serpent, the snake, has no legs. It crawls on its belly and it eats the dust of the earth. Do you realize what we are doing today? What, what the devil is doing today to people he is devouring the dust of the earth that God made humanity from. He is devouring humanity. And man has, mankind, when I say it, I'm not being sexist today. I'm just telling you I'm being inclusive of mankind, man and woman. And Satan is still devouring today. But God put a curse on the devil where he didn't have a leg to stand on. And the devil doesn't have a leg to stand on when somebody's got power with the Lord. When they're delivered from the devil, when they're delivered from the clutches of hell, and they are filled with the Spirit of God, when they're born again, they are baptized in Jesus' name. They're filled with the Spirit of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is a greater power than Satan. And so when we've had problems and difficulties, let those cause us to recognize that we need God today. If you never felt sadness, how would you know God is your comfort? If you never made a mistake, how would you know that God has mercy, grace, and love to forgive? Away from God, we make many blunders. We make many wrong choices. We do many things that offend other people, and oftentimes you offend people one time, and it's your last time they write you off, they wash their hands of you, they forget about you and want nothing to do with you. God is perfect. He never fails. How can I be so hard against anybody because I make mistakes? 
But if I feel so high and mighty and prideful that I can't forgive somebody else, how can I expect God to forgive me? But God is one that forgives. God is the God of another chance. And many chances to many of us. But how could I know that God would forgive if I never made a mistake? Love is what causes God to forgive. Today I want everybody in this congregation to know it was love that brought Jesus to the place of preaching the gospel to the poor, healing the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and set at liberty them that are bruised. Folks that are hurt today, there's a hurt in the hearts and the lives of so many people today that Jesus is the only one that can heal. But how would you know? If you were never broken, then how would you know that he can make you whole? If you never had a problem, how would you know that God could solve it? And if you never had any suffering, how would you know when you would go through that thing? And that God can get you through a situation that you couldn't get through yourself. I told Brother Moore this morning, we were just discussing things early on when he firstly arrived here this morning. We were talking about things that he did uh, in his occupation and told him things that I did and how God helped me to do a lot of things that was beyond me. That's a benefit. That's a privilege. God can give you answers and insight to the present, to the future, and to things that you need to do. Isn't that good? If we've ever been sold on God, if we've ever been sold on Jesus Christ, who is above all and through all that have him in our life, and he's everything to us that we need him to be. How would we ever know that if we never went through the fire, how that God can take things and purify our lives? His fire, the fire of the Lord that purifies our life. And how that he gives us things. And when he gives us things, we learn that what he gives us is invaluable. You can't put a price tag on it. And if you've never been corrected, how would you know that God loves you? God corrects us sometimes. He does so many things. He gives us insight into things. And then if our lives were perfect, in ourself why would we need him if we give regards to this today there is not one perfect one in here and we all stand weighed in the balance and found wanting but isn't it good today to know that god has love mercy grace and forgiveness restoration and new life for our brokenness he offers us wholeness and completeness the bible says that we are complete in him him he's the one that we are complete in today i wonder if we stand if there's anybody here this morning Maybe there's somebody here, you're struggling with something. Maybe the devil's got you having a complex in your mind and making you feel that you're not loved, nobody cares for you. Who cares? God cares, and we care. If there's somebody that needs to pray today, if there's anybody that needs deliverance today, if there's anybody that needs the Spirit of God and His salvation that comes through the indwelling of the infilling of His Spirit, I want to tell you, Jesus is here today. Is 
I want to open this altar today if anybody desires to pray for anything in your life you're going through. If you want us to pray for you, if you want me to anoint you, maybe you need healing for the body. Maybe you need healing for your spirit. I just want to challenge you today to push past peer pressure, push past anything that the devil would try to intimidate you with and try to make you feel that God doesn't love you. If Jesus didn't love all, he would not have died for all. Is there anybody here today that desires prayer? Today I'm going to anoint them with a cloth that has been anointed with oil. For myself and many ministers, we prayed over this cloth. We anointed this cloth, just like you read in Acts, the, I believe it's the 17th chapter, where Paul took handkerchiefs. I want us to believe God for this couple to bless them. Lord, I want you to touch them. I want you to strengthen them as they struggle. Lord, as they face many things in the realm of the spiritual, the physical, even the financial, the emotional. I want you to bless them today. Let the power of your spirit rest upon them to bring health and healing, strength and direction, protection to them like they have never had before in their life, in their early days of being filled with your spirit, in their new life and living for you. I want you to bless them mightily. I want the power of your spirit as we bind together as a church praying today for them every power of hell coming against their mind i want you to bless them to touch them to deliver them today from everything that the devil tries to put in their way to destroy them i want you to give them strength to overcome to go over or to go around or you to remove everything that they face God, that seeks to try to destroy them. Give them power to overcome in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be touched, be healed, be encouraged, be blessed of the Lord this morning. Is there anybody else here today? You're facing something that you want a church to join together with you and pray with you and pray for you. God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I believe that when we really tru truly trust God and we push past everything else and we look to him only, he's that answer. Is there anybody here that desires prayer? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is here this morning. Today I feel that Jesus spoke to us something that he spoke that is still relevant to us today. If there's any need, let me tell you this morning. One final scripture I want to quote to you. The Lord said, casting all your cares upon me. Because he cares for me. Does all, I want to ask this church this morning, does all mean all or does it just mean some? Does it mean discriminately and particularly or is it entirely and completely? I want to tell you if you've got any kind of need right now, if you want to lift your hands, whether you want to, come to this altar or whether you want to stand where you are will you lift your hands lift your needs as you lift the name of jesus 
up in the prayer that you would say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking for deliverance. I'm asking for healing. I'm asking for encouragement. I'm asking for your blessings in my life in the realm of the spiritual, the physical, the financial, or the emotional, whatever realm, whatever category, whatever classification that you are in need of, would you lift your voice? Would you lift your hands without fear, without favor? Would you lift your voice today and cry out with desperation to the Lord God Almighty that's able and more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can think or ask according to the power that works in you. I want everybody to understand today that God has given to every man the measure of faith. God has given you enough faith to get you started whether you're a saint or ain't a saint. If you would just reach out to him this morning, he is faithful and just to forgive if we'll confess every sin, if we will cast every care on him, no matter what it is, he will help you. He will help you to do the things that you can do, and then he will do the things that you and I or nobody else can do. He's here today. Is anybody willing to give God an opportunity? Would you make provision? He's the perfect gentleman. He will not invade your life. He will not knock the door down. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in unto him, and I will eat with him. I will fellowship with him. Is what he's saying. Is there anybody here this morning that would listen to the voice of God, that would hear, that would heed? If not, we're going to close this service knowing that we've done everything that we could to stage this service today for folks to know that God is an ever-present help in the time of need. He's more than a fair-weather friend. He's there at all times for all needs 